boxes definitely have to be cleaned out on an annual basis. Um, all living things have uh, parasites and, and diseases, and bluebirds are no exception. So the, uh, uh, the nests, if they're not cleaned out, there can be um, parasites at least that will hang out in the nest and uh, affect the baby bluebirds as well as the adults. But if the parasites get to be too much of a burden, it can actually uh, kill the, the baby bluebirds. So it's really important to make sure that the, the nest boxes are cleaned out annually. Um, and also to just you know, provide them a, a good clean place to begin a new nest. It's important to clean the boxes out because bluebirds are programmed to carry nesting materials in, but they're not, they don't carry anything out. So the boxes can become full of nesting material and become unusable after a couple of years. So it's important to clean them out before the bluebirds come back in the spring. So if you wait till the spring, you're gonna be walking in the snow to clean them out. So the fall is the perfect time clean them out. There's nothing more fun than being out with my friends on a beautiful sunny fall day, cleaning out birdhouses and repairing them and enjoying all the bluebirds that are a result of those birdhouses. So when you see bluebirds out there, it's likely the result of the hard work and dedication of a lot of volunteers over the years to make these bird houses and to maintain them every fall. Okay, now we're gonna clean out this bird house. I think it's already clean, but for demonstration purposes, I use a pair of these, these kind of pliers. They have a nice flat face on that you can use to tap nails that have worked out back in. Grab that duplex nail and lever it out like that. And then open it up. And I can see that that chickadee has put a bunch of moss in there. So if this was an old box, I use this painter's tool and slip it under there and clean all that debris out. Chickadee has brought that in there for its nesting material. So we're going to leave all that in place. So we'll close it up and leave it to the chickadee. roof is the most vulnerable part. Over time, the weathering and uh, warping and shrinking and expanding, the fronts crack usually. But the fronts can have giant cracks in and the birds still use them. The roof can have cracks in, letting moisture in and the birds still use that. I've seen bird houses that are just, the pence post is tipped over at weird angles and the birds still use them. When the bird house is kind of falling apart and, and it's all floppy and you feel like a strong wind could knock it down, it's time for repair. Typically it's really hard to repair a bird house in the field. So what I do, is I just take it down and put a new one up and then take the damaged one back to my shop and, and put new parts or take it all apart and throw most of it away and use the few parts that are still good for other birdhouses. And another little trick I'll show you. Sometimes woodpeckers, like flickers, will come and peck this hole and make it huge, make it too big, so that starlings or other birds can get in there. 
If that happens, then you can take a scrap of wood and drill the right size hole in it and put it right over the top and cover up the big hole. I call this a gasket. You can call it whatever you want. And that way you can restore the proper size hole to your birdhouse. The proper size hole is an inch and nine sixteenths. The drill bit called a Forstner bit that makes an inch and nine sixteenths hole is kind of expensive. It's much cheaper to buy like a spade bit that's an inch and a half and then take your rasp and rasp it open just a little bit more. It's been, it was found out that mountain bluebirds, they're, they're just a little more broad in the shoulders than western bluebirds, an inch and a half hole just to crowds them a little bit. When they have to go in and out of that hole 50,000 times, it's nice to save wear and tear on their feathers. The bluebirds raise babies from the size of bumblebees to full-size bluebirds in three weeks, and it's all bugs. We love bluebirds. We love swans. Chickadees always get that one there, and so they carry all this moss in, and it's like this deep, and it's spotless. They keep a clean nest, so I always leave that in there for them. Yeah, this is a mountain chickadee we're looking at, and they like these boxes too. If you go to clean out a box and it has a bunch of nice, clean moss bits in the bottom, I just leave it there for the next year. That's a lot of work for those little birds to carry all that moss in. 